Starting off the day here nice and quiet. You can see a vehicle on the lift outside the window. Just a couple of little office chores to take care of before we get into the labor work. We've got this uh, four post lift working to be installed, which is quite a task, a big job. So we're all just trying to pick through that. If we can get a little bit done each day, great. That's the way we'll, uh, we'll get this project passed. And on to the knife work, which I know most of you are here for. Thanks for sticking through the mechanic work or that side either way. Just trying to show you guys along. But we have some beautiful fresh steel and material just glued up. And we're going to finish up my signature forge finish here before we start actually working through these handles. You're going to get to see all of these before the end of this video. And there's a couple just gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. They're all real nice here. There are a couple outstanding pieces, as you can see, and you will see, at the end of this video. Okay, back to the knife work, and we have some beauties. I have a couple of these here that are custom builds. Always try to work through those, so every batch is a number of customs that go through. And then, as well as some that are going on the website for you guys, and we have a couple here, uh, Prevail, a Tuckamore, in really awesome material. I'm excited to see how it comes out. So this is, this is Prevail here, but this is in a Fusion. And I've never done this fusion before, but this is a burl and a black. Have a look there, look at those lines. So we'll just snip off some of that bulk there now. Start grinding these in, and I cannot wait to see what these look like. They're gonna be awesome. Now some people will cut the rough handle material as close to their knife shape as possible so when they glue up there's very little grind off. I prefer and I find it much more efficient after years of, of knife crafting at this point to just rough cut my material and just hog it down like this afterwards until I just kiss the tang and then I'll start refining. It saves the whole process of having to be precise beforehand before glue up. So. I just I find it much more efficient use of my time and the results are the same anyways because everything is perfect ground right to the tang.
You can see here, guys, I've got this one sanded up to final grit. We'll take it to the buffer in a minute. But this fusion material, although it's some of my favorite on the market, I think it's just gorgeous. Um, the burrow and then filled in with the epoxy, it's just, just beautiful. And you can see, like I said, we mashed up those lines there. But it is very, the epoxy is hard to get a perfect final finish on it. You can see we have some beautiful file work on this one. Wait till you see it buffed up though. And then we have a Prevail here. Both of these will be available. Look how interesting this one is here. Really cool. But this is a tough material, like I said, to get a good finish on. I'll finish it up to 400 grit on the belt grinder, the slack belt. And then coat it in cyanoacrylate. And that'll fill in every little pore and every little nick and everything. And then I'll redo it with the 400 grit. And then I'll take it out here and I'll start with 400 grit. The opposite direction with sandpaper, 600. You could go 8, 1,000, 2,000 if you, if you wanted to. But you definitely want to go up to 800 or 1,000 at least. And then to buff it that's when you can really see the brilliance and the metallic and the epoxy because these epoxies are filled with metallic. So you get all that kind of swirly, just incredible. It's pretty hard to convey on, on the pictures, like when I post them on the website. It's a little easier, I'll show you when we're done here. I can show you under the right light on video, but it's really hard to capture on a picture. Even at this stage, guys, when you get to a buffer, and uh, this is uh, pretty much a must-have in my line of work, but you've got to get the wheels right. It can't be too coarse. It can't be too soft. You need to rely on the buffer to actually make a change in that surface. And so you need the right compound. Um, I'm trying to think what compound this is. I believe it's the Maverick brand from Maritime Knife Supply. I can't quite remember. I'm going to dress it on this, I believe this is a Canton, or no, this is a just a traditional spiral sewn flannel, I believe. It's a great wheel, but we'll dress it up and we'll put a finish on it. Just for your reference beforehand, see if I could show you that kind of chalky finish. Very mild striation in it, even from that 1000 grit, it shows just the finest hair of striation in it.
Okay, here we go. This beautiful little batch all finished up. We have, I just got a little smear of oil on them now like I do when shipping. Scandi ground black burlap tube pin. This is a custom order, order to this exact spec. This is what the client wanted. That's what the client gets. Premium hand stitched leather. Isn't that nice? The, uh, the bake apple is just such a great piece. Such classic lines on it. Really, really love it. And then another custom order here. This is a Sabre ground bake apple in a green, I believe this is a Elder Burl. Just look at this Elder Burl, the, the colors in there. Wild, which goes perfectly. The customer wanted a green, green wood, something real interesting, and then an orange liner. But this Elder Burl has this uh, like orangey tones in it, just wild. Isn't that an incredible piece of, of wood? And with the orange liner, and then I chose like these coppery phenolic pins, micarta pins. You can see the texture in them, so all together, I mean look at this, this package here, just beautiful. Some brown leather for this one. This really nice bag apple here is going up on the website. I just love this. is an Altrex black, so it's really coarse, like a heavy canvas micarta, and it's just beautiful quarter inch pins. And then I did a red fiber liner, so it really stands out. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that nice? And then again in that brown leather. Oh, what a look! What a hunting or uh, or camping or hiking or EDC companion. Just great. And then we have a couple stars of the show here. This Prevail here it has is probably the finest example of this fusion that I've ever seen. Just the very nicest piece, I think. I might be uh, stating incorrectly. It might just be in the moment here. Because I'm thinking about a couple of knives I did, a, a Master Hunter with a chocolatey brown one, and a few different ones that were incredible. So maybe I'm misspeaking, but uh, this is just, I definitely haven't seen any nicer than this. The figuring on the burls here, and that black, this is a black epoxy. I mentioned earlier about uh, seeing the swirl in it, and I just can't really show it on camera. There it is. You can see it up through there. See, you see the hints there? Really tough to show on camera. But again, look at this burrow on this side. How wild that is. And then uh, a natural, natural micarta liner, polished tang. And this beauty is available. This is the Prevail. This is the Prevail sheath here. Standard for the Prevail. Nice deep fitting. Airbrush dyed. Just a beautiful piece of leather here for this piece. And then the final star of the show, of course, that same piece of epoxy, that fusion. Look at the burl. This burl in these pieces this time is just wild. But we have a saber ground blade. You can see the little hints of something special there. Polished tang. This is a black micarta liner, which has a beautiful texture in it. There, that'll help you see there. Look at that texture. Beautiful. But then, as I turn around to the spine, look at that filed tang. A fully polished tang and filed. Look at that pattern work there. Just beautiful as it passes down through. On the, on the spine here, it's all filled, so you don't actually feel it. Up here, of course, you can actually feel the filings. So it adds like a, a subtraction or an element of jimping. But back here, it's just glassy smooth. Beautiful. And this one will be also available to you guys on the website as you're watching this. Connellsu.com. This one was going in a natural leather sheath. And this is the standard model sheath in most cases for the Tuckamore. This is what most often you would get 
The Tuckamore is a little thinner, a little bit slimmer of a knife than the Prevail, so it can be a little more compact of a sheath, a little tidier. There we go. But that's it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hit that like button if it's your first time here. Subscribe to the channel, please, for more content like this. And check out the website, kylenoseweedy.com for some really nice stock there now. You guys bought up the last uh, release real quick. There's brother, some of you mentioned that he's starting to make a little bit more appearance, but he's not interested in the, <laughs> in the show. <laughs> Look at this lift guys. Look at this lift. We'll update y'all perhaps on that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.